name is Ian McHugh and I was born in Manchester in 1955. On my mother's side were English Protestants who'd lived within 20 miles of Manchester for at least 200 years. And in many ways, we're a very English family. But my dad, Bill, was born in the Charlton or Medlock area into an Irish family of 12 children, son of Frank McHugh of Castle Bar, County Mayo. And here is the only photo, photograph I have of Bill and his father, Frank, together, taken during World War II when my dad was in the RAF. Sadly, my Irish granddad died in 1947, eight years before I was born. But I've long been proud of my Irish roots and in 2004 went back to County Mayo and managed to track down a second cousin still living on the small farm where my granddad was born. So who were these Mayo McHughes and how did they end up in Manchester? Well, my great great grandfather, John McHugh, was born around 1820, three miles north of Castle Bar in a township called Kappa. He was a tenant farmer on land owned by the Law Life Assurance Company of London. And he married Anne Philbin in 1841. They had five children, including my great grandfather, Martin McHugh, who was born around 1845. And he married Anne Malloy in 1868, when they could both only sign their names with a cross, not being able to write. However, within 10 years, he was working in a shop on Linenhall Street in Castle Bar, and later as a clerk. So he must have been taught to read and write as an adult. According to the census, their family spoke both English and Irish. The couple went on to have at least 12 children, the first 10 in Castle Bar, before moving to Manchester in 1889. We don't know the exact reason for that, but looking into the history, clearly Mayo had been badly affected by the famine in the late 1840s, but emigration continued on a large scale over the next 60 years, with the largest exodus, in fact, being in the 1880s and 1890s, following the failure of the potato crop in 1879. The Connaught Telegraph, reported on the scene at Castlebar Railway Station not long after, in 1901. Here were women, old and young, fair and swarthy, wrinkled and comely. Some wore shawls and antique jackets and old-fashioned bonnets, all gathered in from the hills. They were all talking, weeping or sighing, or gazing piteously before them with reddened eyes, or wailing all of a sudden at the sight of a tear-stained face. The men were mostly young, great hulking fellows in slouch hats, boys from the hillsides, nearly all armed with blackthorns. Now the little group stood for the last time among their friends and faithful companions, home behind them, their faces to the world. At the junction, the train steamed up. The whole crowd was a mass of excitement. Whistle sounded, voices grew shrill, Wales found a sudden note of agony. Tears flowed fresh, faces crowded closer, hands darted and clutched, and from warm Irish hearts rang the most pathetic farewells I have ever listened to. So Martin and Annie must have caught a similar train with their children and arrived in Manchester in 1889, where Martin soon got a job as a railway porter at London Road Station, now known as Piccadilly, and he seems to have carried on as that right through to his death in 1915. My granddad Frank, meanwhile, had been born back in Mayo in 1885, and so arrived in Manchester aged about four. He went on to be a packer in a cotton warehouse, later a foreman, and did that for all of his working life apart from war service in the Royal Artillery from 1916 to 18, when he ended up serving in Egypt. In 1908, uh, Frank married an English Protestant woman, Beatrice Johnson, at the Holy Name Catholic Church, which is now the University Catholic Chaplaincy. The church records that I saw there have 
Ne Tamere, written in red next to their names to show it as a mixed marriage that must be carefully watched. They had five children together, including my dad, Bill. And then, after my grandma's premature death from an illegal abortion in 1920, he remarried and had a further seven children. My dad left school at 13, also working in a warehouse until joining the RAF in 1939, and then married my mum, Iris, in 1949 and worked as a clerk for SO Petroleum until retirement in 1977. Mum was also from an English Protestant family, and my dad never attended a Catholic church after their Anglican wedding. He was, however, very close to his four brothers and sisters, and they always fondly remembered their Irish father and the songs he used to sing them. I was born in 1955 and the first member of our family to go to university, retiring recently after a career in community service, local government and adult education. In my 20s, I spent some time in Northern Ireland, running children's play schemes on both Catholic and Protestant estates. My two sons are named after Robert Emmett and James Connolly, and I'm proud to say that my delightful first grandchild bears the name Maeve McHugh.